Hey everybody. My name is Garrett Hartle. Welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. In this week's episode, we're gonna talk about something that almost nobody seems to know how to do, which is how to accurately measure a snake. Okay, all joshing aside, it is amazing how inaccurate some of the measurements I've heard for snakes really is. The guy that has the giant reticulated python that no one's ever heard of that's 30 feet, uh, or in my case, everybody's five and a half, six, seven foot superdor females that are laying these 30 egg clutches. Now I don't know why you need an accurate measurement on a snake, whether it's just so that you can track the progress of a pet that's growing. Perhaps you're trying to sell an animal and need to figure out an accurate measurement on it so that you can put that with the advertisement. Or maybe you're just afraid your snake is a little too big and you don't want to hurt your back. Now there are many different methods and the one that you use is ultimately going to depend on how accurate you need that measurement to be. It's notoriously difficult to judge a snake's size in a picture because pictures are easy easily manipulated. Let me show you what I mean. Hey Aiden, come here. Yeah. Now you all know Aiden, our resident giant. Pretty tall guy. Come on over here. Okay, Ceilings okay. scraping the, yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's a big dude. I mean, did you play basketball in high school? I wish. No? Oh, okay. Yeah, big, big guy until you get a different perspective. Don't be too quick to judge something that you see on the internet, please. You're probably just gonna make yourself look bad by saying you know something judged on a picture alone. Right, Aiden? Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you through kind of the evolutionary process of taking measurements that I've used. It just doesn't work in the human brain to be able to accurately estimate the size of an animal like this, curled up, sitting in her cage. And I think the reason why is because if they're long and skinny, we tend to think they're shorter. That's why you hear so many exaggerated small super dwarf sizes and if they're big and fat we tend to hear that they're that they're longer this is because of emotional response in our brain we all know Garrett's emotions are dead but for the rest of us it's a good excuse but take a look at this girl um, you know for size perspective if you want to you know you can see her in here she's probably about the size of a, a ball python similarly if we were to weigh them both we actually did take the time to weigh the snake after we were done filming this video. Turns out that she weighs 3,568 grams. But because we can't see how long she is in here, we're gonna have to figure something out. So let's bring her out here for a minute. Come here, baby girl. This is a, a young adult, um, albino super dwarf female. Ooh, look at that. As Soon as she comes out and stretches out, you can start to see how long she is. Think you can guess? Comment below. No cheating though. Now, if all I need on her is like, okay, she's bigger than this or she's over this type of a measurement, then one easy way to do it is to kind of mark out your measurements on the floor. Now in here, take a look at this floor. You actually have, we have the marks on this old cement floor where tiles used to be and those are 12 inch tiles. So we know that if she stretches out, that she will be at least a certain length. So trying to get her to go mostly straight and co having live animals cooperate is always the tough one here. But this tile here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. And this is kind of what I'm saying when people say, oh, you know, I'm moving up from ball pythons. I don't want to get anything over six feet. Well, a six foot retic is actually considerably smaller than a ball python. Just to show you guys what that looks like, this guy right here, is only about six feet and under 1500 grams. But stretching out this way we could see that her head was just beyond one side, her tail was just beyond the other side, and when we count out the tiles on the floor we know she's over seven feet. In case you're keeping track, the length of the snake came in to be around seven and a half feet for the eyeball method. So if you're really bad at estimating, that's a quick, easy way to do it. Stretch them out, put them on the floor, and take a look. Okay, now the second method, and one that should be a little bit more accurate, is probably one you've heard of, the string measuring method. Now the downsides to this one is that you're trying to figure out the length of a moving target. So, but the, the principle is that you would stretch a string from the nose along the spine of the animal down to the tail, whether they're moving or not, 
and then measure that string. One person actually said that in measuring a large snake, that they said they were off by four feet and they were saying that the string was too stretchy. Don't use a string that changes lengths to record lengths here, guys. One string, annoyingly, sometimes we know never stretches, would actually be a simple extension cord. So if I were to start this on the prong end, a string measure method would go something like this. Let's start our string measurement a little bit behind the thing here. So we're gonna try to follow the curves of her spine, and even if she moves, I can kind of put my fingers down wherever I need to so that she can go ahead and move along. And as long as I try to get match the curve of that spine, she, she can kind of move around a little bit and we come up with this length right here. So let me go ahead before she destroys my whole room and mark down our measurement. We'll go ahead and make a line right here and then we can stretch out our non-stretchy extension cord and go ahead and measure this. Now another version of this that has you not as much dealing with a moving around snake that I've heard of is to actually go ahead and the idea is you would place a clear sheet of like this plexiglass and actually have a piece of this cut to the size of maybe a bucket or a tub where you can lay it over the snake and then if they're not moving which super dwarves never do you could actually draw where the spine is lay your rope on now a non-moving target and get a more accurate measurement but because it requires all these tools and stuff I don't see it being very convenient Unless, like I said, you had a previous setup and you were doing this all the time and it would probably have to be a smaller animal as well. If you guys like what you're seeing here in this video, you should really check out our Instagram to see daily updates on the snakes at Reach Out Reptiles. Alright, now that we've gone over a few of the commonly used methods, let me show you something that actually works really well. So we're going to go ahead and put her in kind of a confined area where she can sit down and relax for a little bit and return to her in just a little while and I will show you why. Okay, so now that we have our measurement recorded on this, we're gonna go ahead and stretch out our non-stretchy string and see how long she is. Okay, we started on this end. Let's see. Mark's over here. Placeholder. Always got to take this for handy. Can you guys see where the mark is right down there? Let's see. Now we're getting somewhere. You can really see, like, holy smokes, this girl's pretty long. All right, so we're going to go ahead and line those up. And we have a measurement of 91 inches, all stretched out. So that little snake is seven and a half feet. So for this method, we got seven feet, seven inches, which is longer than the last method. And that's gonna be a pretty good measurement, but obviously depending on the animal, you might not be able to just sit there and work with it like that to get a measurement. So let me show you the most accurate way. Okay, for this final method, we'll see if she's all calmed down in here, but basically you need something. Just an object that you know the exact length of. We're going to use this 12 inch ruler and we're going to bring it in. We've got her in here so that she's calmed down, she's relaxed. And what we're going to do is simply take a picture of her from the top down so that nothing is closer or further away from the camera. In other words, you want it two dimensional. You don't want to do it like this because as things get closer to the camera and farther away, they look bigger or smaller like we talked about. Put your head down please. So, with that ruler being flat, and the snake now being flat and relaxed, I'm just going to hold this as straight over it as I can, so it's completely two-dimensional. The reason why I can tell it's straight over is because I'm looking, staring straight down into this cup for the most part, 
And over here, you can see I was looking at it sideways a little bit, making her seem bigger than she really is. See the difference? See how that ruler actually looks bigger in comparison to her? Just with that little shift in perspective. But this is the picture we're gonna use, all one plane, nice and flat, for our accurate measurement. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here's gonna be your best and easiest method. This was something that was developed by field researchers who needed to quickly have a way of measuring sometimes literally hundreds of animals in a short amount of time. So they developed a software system where if you get that picture right from the top down with an item of a known size, sometimes they would use the circumference of the inside of a bucket, it could be anything. But you place an item of known size in with the animal, snap a picture from above, and you're done. Then you take that picture and you bring it over to the snake measuring app is actually copied on multiple different websites now. But I use serpwidgets.com. So all I need to do is text myself the picture that we used of this female and upload that into the website. Okay, so here's my picture. We've called it a measurement. So all I need to do is choose the file from the website, find the file that I have, here she is, hit choose, and then click the use this button. All right, now you'll see there's automatically a red highlighted area around the ruler. So we're gonna select two points, one on either end of the ruler. So I'm gonna pick one here and one here. Now watch that red highlight. As Soon as I click the second point, it automatically jumps to snake. All I have to do is take my mouse and click points along the curve of the spine. Now, you'll notice it's taking a straight line measurement, which is just the sum of all the straight measurements between those points, but it's actually creating a natural curve as well. And that curve is the magic of this software that gets you the most accurate measurement possible. Now, I wanna set my, my units, which this is 12 units, which will be inches, because of, we use that ruler, and now we see the straight line and it gives us really that curved line measurement, 98 and almost one half units. The other way to do this, we could say the ruler is one foot long and it will give it to us automatically in feet and inches. So for this method, which is the most accurate, the length of the snake came in to be eight feet, two inches, which might be a bit surprising since it's a lot longer than the length we got for the first method and the second method. The cool thing about this method is that it counts for every twist and turn of the snake. So you get it completely accurate and scientifically approved. Well, there you have it. Sometimes it's just a matter of pulling the snake out and saying, oh my goodness, you've gotten big. But if you need an accurate measurement, go ahead and use these software tools that are developed for this exact thing and you really can't go wrong. I hope you guys have a great weekend and we will catch you next time.